I'm doing this video series because there is a 19.1 version of Apex now. I have a complete video series for Oracle Apex 18.1 and the current series will use Apex 19.1 and will follow in parallel with the same steps in the 18.1 series. So I have for software this time XE 11.2, Apex 19.1, SQL Developer 19.1. I will not walk through the steps of installing XE and upgrading to Apex 19.1. You can look at the previous video series and this particular video, Apex 00 of 30, if you want a demonstration of how to install XE and upgrade Apex. The steps of going from Apex 18.1 to 19.1 are the same. So if you want to work along, you can download and install Oracle Oracle XE 11.2, or you can use the most current version, which I do not have installed. You can download Oracle Apex 19.1 and go through the steps of upgrading to that. The one other thing that I have is I have also installed a translated version of Apex for Spanish. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty simple to follow and pretty easy to do. But it's not quite as simple as I've seen on a few posts online. It's not just a matter of selecting a different language. You do have to install a set of support files, images, and other things that will provide the translated version of Apex. Once you've done that, then when you log in and go to, in my case, the local install of Oracle Apex, I can pick between Spanish and English. So if I look at my version of the database, as I told you, if I run this, then I can see that I do have 11.2 installed. I can go to SQL Developer Help About and see that I'm working with version 19.1. So let's get started. In the previous video, we modified the dominant breed reference table by adding a column for category. And because we've added that and we've added data for category, we are now going to use a pair of LOVs, lists of values, where the selection of a category for an animal will determine the list of dominant breeds that you will see in the next LOV. We'll also create an interactive grid for the animal table and take a look at the difference in using the cascading LOV in a single record form, which is what we currently have, versus an interactive grid. The coding is just slightly different, so you need to know about that. And then we'll run a script using SQL Workshop Run Script and we'll run a script that was available to you when you downloaded all the other scripts at the beginning of this tutorial series. This will create triggers, little bits of code, that are executed when a change is made to an existing record in a table. We don't have triggers on every single table in the database, but if they were primary tables such as animal, person, or employee, or transaction also, then you probably want to have what we call audit columns that will keep track of when a record's created and when a record has been modified. You don't generally use these audit columns in support tables, such as reference tables for LOVs. So I'm logged in to Apex as Carlo Mora, the developer. Let's open up the application that we're working with. This is our development application. And go into Shared Components and look at List of Values. And we have Animal Category. That is a static list, which means we create the list manually, and it's not maintained by end users that could add a record. The developer would have to add records to this. 
and we see the display in mixed case and all caps for what is stored, canine, feline, and so on. If I go over to SQL Workshop and into Object Browser, and I select, anim uh, let's see, not animals, but Dom Breed Lookup, and look at the data, we have a primary key field, it's a surrogate key, we have what we will see displayed in the list and what is stored. And this is what we'll use to link to the other LOV. So I'm going to come back to the application and run our application and look under Animals. Right now we have a report that opens a single page form. So I can click on one of these to edit. I see my category LOV. Then down here for dominant breed, I'm not seeing the LOV. So I'm going to edit this page first. And on the left hand side, I will select dominant breed. Over on the right hand side for properties, I'll go to select list. And then I will scroll down to the list of values and say shared components. And then pick the dominant breed LOV save that and before I look at the form I actually want to change the location of this field the sequence is 170 over on the left hand side category the sequence is 30 so I'm going to come down to dominant breed and change that to 32 so now I'm seeing dominant breed next to category and I want to make sure that this is set for start new row no. And I see that also in the layout in the midsection of this page. Animal ID, category, dominant breed. I'll save that and I'll run that. Right now I don't have any data in this record. But if I select feline, then I do not want to see dominant breeds listed that apply to dogs or to canines. So I will come back and edit this page. I will select dominant breed on the left hand side and I will switch from, let me get the LOV here. I will switch from shared component to SQL query. And then I'll type in the code. I'll pause the video while I do that. I actually did a copy paste. I went and looked at the list of values for the dominant breed, looked at the coding in the list of values under shared components, and then copied it in here. But what we need is we need to add a where clause so we don't see all breeds. We want to have a match on animal category, and that's equal to, let's see, what's my page number here? P5, and this is case sensitive. So make it a capital P, and then 5, and then category. And you can check your code, and it says it's valid. So we're saying we only want to see from the animal breed, the dominant breed, a matchup between category and animal category. Now we also, while we're here in the properties, need to scroll down a bit and set the cascading LOV parent item again, but this time without the colon, but again put in the P5 in caps, that's P5 underscore category. When we do that, we get items to submit, and we're going to submit P5 underscore category. By setting the items to submit, we're going to have the value selected in the category LOV so stored so that other page items in this active APEX session can access that value. So let's run that or save it and run it. And I can click on feline and then I only see the breeds that relate to feline. I can click on bird and see the breeds only that relate to bird. Now I don't want to add a record right now but what I want to do is come back to page designer 
and I want to add a page and I'm going to do a form. It will be an editable interactive grid. Don't worry if your page number doesn't match mine, but I'm going to call this Animals Grid. I do want a navigation item. It'll come under Animals. And I want this on a table. I want it editable. Yes, that's already selected. I select the Animals table and select Animal ID, which is off the screen for my primary key. And I'll click Create. And look at the columns on the left-hand side. Included in that is the blob column, which is for a picture, but this is going to be a spreadsheet-like view. I do not want this. In fact, I'll get an error message. So I'm going to take that and delete the animal pick field. I'm going to display animal ID, and I want to move just so we can see everything on this one screen. I'm going to do a drag and drop and get Dom Breed ID up here next to category. So for category, I will do the select list. Go to shared components and pick animal category. For dominant breed, I will change that to a select list, scroll down, and instead of doing shared components, it'll be SQL query. And I'll open up the window for the code, and I'll pause the video. So the same code with the exception of in the where clause, we don't have page item numbers in an interactive grid. So I'm doing a colon and then the name of the column, which is category. And again, I believe this is, and I believe this will be case sensitive. So let me try my code, test it. I got an error on line five and it's somehow I removed the one for column number one. That's the column to sort on. Let me try that again. Again, we scroll down a bit for cascading LOV parent column. I select category, items to submit, I select category, and I will save that and run that. So this is the interactive grid. So if I want to be in edit mode and I want to add a row, then I can come over to category and I could pick feline and my dominant breed is way out to the right. I haven't changed the location of the actual display of the column here, but if I pick that, I'm only seeing the breeds associated with feline. I'm going to back out of this. I'm not going to save it at this point. But if I want to get dominant breed over by category, I would come up here to Actions, Columns, and I would scroll down and get my dominant breed and move it up. I just took off the display. I just need to keep moving it up till I get it next to the field I want it to display in the, uh, in the form, in the grid. And save that. So now I'm getting dominant breed next to category. So just a small difference in uh, the coding when you're doing an interactive grid instead of a single row form. The last thing I want to do here is I want to go back to the application and go to SQL Workshop and I want to run SQL scripts. So I will upload a script and this is something you got when you first downloaded all the files that came with this tutorial. So I'll upload and go find the file. So here we see triggers B4 update and that's what I want. So I select that, upload that, 
and we see that here. I want to run that, and I see that the triggers were created. If I come back to SQL scripts and do, do an edit, then I can actually look at the code. So you can look at the code and see that I have a trigger for before update on employees, on act activities, animals, and so on. And each one of these is going to grab the system date and put it in the date modified field. So now that I have created those triggers inside the application, I can come back to my application and I'm going to switch back to the report with form and I'll do an update. So let me pick, it doesn't really matter, I'll do blaze here. So here we have a canine, a German Shepherd and for mix I'll say yes because that hadn't been identified. I'll apply the changes and this is blaze. Come back here and filter on blaze and I can actually see right now in the report that the date modified has been populated. I'll see you in the next video.